So I'm making this video while back in Weezer, made it back to the U.S. Our last day in um, Israel, we were just scheduled to kind of have a down day and then leave at like midnight or one in the morning. I was disappointed we didn't get to see enough of Israel, and in particular some of the places that Jesus went. So we were able to schedule with our hotel a day excursion where they said you can leave at like 6.40 uh, in the morning. You should be back by 5 in the afternoon, give you plenty of time to get your bags and then head out. So we um, went off to Nazareth and took us a little over an hour to get there. As we're driving along, um, she points out a couple of spots, the tour guide, the road to Emmaus, where two of the disciples talked with Jesus, but they didn't know it was him. We also saw the place of Armageddon, where, uh, you know, it's mentioned the last battle will be. And then we get to Nazareth. And um, Nazareth, back in Jesus' time, was only about 200 people. Now it's like 70,000. Uh, looks a little different than what I had in mind. Um, pretty cool church there, Church of the Annunciation. Uh, that's the place where Mary heard the word that she was with child. And uh, the, it was just uh, amazing to see the statue up front, a white statue of Mary, but underneath her foot is uh, a snake with her crushing the snake. So uh, fascinating, beautiful church dedicated to Mary. Not far from there was a church dedicated to Joseph. He had a statue out there as well. Um, and the theory was... Jewish men every Friday would have to go through a ceremonial washing and have a specific bath with seven steps down. This ruins this place had that bath. So it's like a two-story church. Um, but down below is this kind of area where he would have taken the bath, where he would have done these things. So uh, just two beautiful churches. Uh, as we kept driving off in a distance, they showed us the Mount of Transfiguration. We didn't get to go there, but the place where Jesus was glorified. Um, we got to see the Mount of Beatitudes. We didn't stop there, but got to see that. And then, so then we got to Capernaum. And in Capernaum, there is the Church of Multiplication, where it was believed that um, he there was a, a rock in which he blessed the fish and the loaves and then gave it to 5,000 to eat. Uh, Capernaum's just, just a fascinating place. Because um, Capernaum is where he spent so much of his ministry and did a lot of incredible things. So Nazareth was 200 people his time, but Capernaum had 5,000. So there's more people, more things going on. Um, of course, as we're driving through all this area, you see Cana of Galilee, where he performed his first miracle. Um, we see um, just incredible things. And, and when we're getting closer to the Sea of Galilee, massive body of water, really incredibly beautiful. And then um, at the at this Sea of Galilee, Capernaum area, we see this synagogue that had been torn down, rebuilt, but a section of it was preserved. So this synagogue that Jesus would have taught in. Um, and then just outside... Just outside the synagogue was uh, Peter's home, where they had built um, this beautiful church over the top of it, but you could still look down and see it. Um, and then there was a statue of Peter there with uh, this scriptural passage about um, Jesus changing his name from Simon to Peter and giving him the keys of the kingdom. Um, just a beautiful place. Of course, being a place that he would have healed Peter's mother-in-law and um, yeah, Capernaum, what a great place. Uh, even when you walk near it, it says the hometown of Jesus. Um, so we spent, um, a good bit of time just looking at the Sea of Galilee. So many things happen at the Sea of Galilee, where he calms the storm, where Peter walks on water with him, where he calls his first disciples, where the resurrected Jesus calls out to them to, um, catch fish. It's just just an amazing place. Um, and so then we go one more stop. We go to the Jordan River, but on the Israel side. 
sure enough, there's a bunch of people getting baptized, people singing in a different language, but you could hear them singing uh, because he lives. And uh, just a beautiful, just a beautiful way to end the trip. We're heading back. It's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Tour guide says we should be back in Tel Aviv by 4 or 5 of the latest, which is no problem because our driver won't pick us up till 9 o'clock that night. And then we just reach non-stop um, shutdown traffic. And the hours go on and it, it literally took us till 9.30 at night. Just a fiasco of... We're not, we're not even sure what caused all of the traffic problems, but uh, our tour guide said there there was there was an attack that day, where some terrorists had killed some um, people, and the police were looking for them. So we were we were stressed. We didn't have Wi-Fi. We didn't have the ability to call um, and try and figure out what's the alternative. We eventually used the tour guide's phone and then got a hold of. The people that scheduled the driver and just said, you know, he can wait, but it's going to cost you another thirty or forty dollars, which is fine. So we get there uh, at nine thirty when we we're supposed to be there at nine, and then race off to go home. And then that it's only supposed to be a half hour from Tel Aviv to the airport, and it ended up being a little over an hour because there was an accident. So I mean, at one point, I was convinced. We weren't making our flight. Like we were, we were tired. We wanted to come home. It wasn't going to happen. But um, got there later than what we wanted to. But still made the flight. Flew 15 hours from Tel Aviv to San Francisco. Um, we we actually couldn't even get off the plane until six in the morning. We flew. We arrived at five in the morning, but the customs don't even open until six. Then had a layover for about six hours and then it was a two hour drive home and uh surprisingly we were able to just kind of muscle through it and uh after all that traveling the day before with nazareth and the sea of galilee and then flying all night we were able to pretty much beat jet lag and it was just good to be home so um yeah it, it was everything i hoped it'd be uh, just incredible opportunity. I'm so grateful. Um, but it is kind of surreal that the first part's done. And uh, so got just a few days, uh, four days, and then I get on a plane again and head to Mexico this time around. I kind of feel like, um, although I, I've been there three other times and I've, I kind of know the ministry, I'm, I'm still not quite clear what I'm going to do. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen next. But just so grateful for all the things I got to see and experience um, on this first part of it.